The story continues. Seth's mom lets Derek go. He was terrified and asks them to save him. She leaves the rest to his uncle and goes to open her cafe. Seth was stunned. When they get back, Seth asks her what happened there. She says it's a secret and she would tell him when the time comes. His uncle thinks about how she used to train Seth when he was just a child. That explains why he was so good at fighting from his childhood. His uncle tells Rodney, Seth's driver, that the Yakuza were behind the rebellion from Bizen and asks him to tighten Seth's security. He orders him to find two guys who will pass as transfer students. Shop his dad. The chief commissioner sees her in a bad mood and calls Jason to find out what is going on. Jason tells him everything about Seth, making him the villain of the story. At night, Seth couldn't sleep after what happened today. The boss man, who was behind Seth's mom's kidnapping, orders his men to send Akira to the same high school. It was his first day as the gym teacher as a chairman, so he was a little awkward. He gets a call from Seth's uncle who tells him that they're going to be two transfer students in the school today and he hangs up the call. One of these transfer students was Brock himself and the other one was Jun Kim. Jun is a secret bodyguard of Seth, but Seth is unaware of this. Akira, who was sent here to kill Seth, comes there too. The class teacher tells them about their upcoming trip to Jeju Island in Japan. When the class ends, Brock gets up and takes Victor outside. Victor was ready to fight but he gets surprised when Brock asks him to train him in boxing. Brock knows that Victor is a great boxer, and if it's him, he can learn to box. After school, Sophie asks Seth to watch a movie together. Seth agrees and asks her out. After Seth was gone, June meets with Rodney, and we see that he is ready for any danger. At Victor's gym, Victor and Brock were sparring. Even though it was Brock's first time boxing, Victor wasn't holding back as he was angry at him. Victor continuously punches Brock, not giving him any chance to fight back. After receiving so many punches, Brock finally dodges Victor's attack and throws his first punch. Victor barely dodges his attack but was startled by his power. He dodges Brock's second attack and lands a punch on Brock, but he knows if he gets hit by even one of his attacks, he is done for. Brock marks Victor and they start fighting again. On the other side, Sophie and Seth were watching a movie, and there were some cute moments between them. After the movie, Seth takes her to his own restaurant but Sophie didn't know that. She asks him, isn't it expensive to which he replies it's his own restaurant. Obviously, Sophie was surprised. Seth asks her when should they go on their date, and Sophie starts blushing. His uncle tells Seth that he is sending some bodyguards with him on the school trip because the gangs in Japan are up to something. Seth asks him not to do that and gets off the car. His uncle orders Rodney to go with him. If you haven't noticed yet, Rodney is one of the strongest members of the gang. When he uses his rod, he fights like a demon. They arrive at Jeju Island. Everyone was excited about this trip. Seth, Brock, and Victor had to share rooms, and they fight over who will get the bigger bed. There were students from other countries like China as well. Victor gets annoyed at how loud they were. Rodney meets June secretly. Seth and Sophie were walking together when some students from China start harassing Sophie. Seth doesn't understand what they were saying but he knows that they are saying something bad. Sophie takes Seth out of there, and one of the students shows the middle finger to Seth, now he was angry. When they were alone, Seth asks her what they were saying but she didn't want him to fight and decides not to tell him. Seth leaves there saying he needs to go to the bathroom, but he was actually going to fight those guys. He attacks him at once and comes back in an instant after beating them. Those students seniors come there and ask them who did it, and he orders his minions to look for Seth. They randomly started beating any Korean students they found. They see Victor and try to mess him with as well, but he gets annoyed and punches one of the guys, making him unconscious. They attack Brock as well and he beats them as well. And just the two of them were able to wipe out all those students. Those students tell all this to their boss, and he was angry at them for losing to a Korean and asks them to bring them all tomorrow. The next day Rodney meets with the Sunshine Group, Jeju branch chief, Josh Yoon. They chit chat for some time, Josh tells Rodney how Chine's gangs, mainly the Triad, have infiltrated the island. He tells him that the Triad gang's leader's son is here for a high school trip at the moment. When Seth and the others were enjoying their time, one of the Chine students spies on them and tells his boss their whereabouts. They target Victor and Brock first, and then Seth too. They ask Seth to follow them as their boss is waiting for him. Seth goes along with them, and he sees Victor and Brock are there as well. The boss comes there, insults them and challenges them in one-on-one -on -one fight. Victor decides to fight him first. He launches a sneaky and unexpected attack, but he dodges it and lands a punch on Victor. With just his one punch, Victor got on his knee and wasn't able to move. That guy was using Chinese martial arts, 
and Victor underestimated him. Seth becomes furious and attacks him, but he dodges that as well. He attacks Seth, but Seth avoids it, only to get hit by his next attack. Seth blocks his attack with his hands and was now excited to fight him. Rodney and June hear the news and they rush to Seth. When they arrive there, they see both of them fighting. June was surprised to see Seth fight like that. Rodney tells him that Seth almost defeated Peter, his uncle in a fight two years ago. Seth and that guy were going toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. And after a long fight of avoiding, Seth was finally able to land a hit on him. But his fight was disrupted by a strange man. Seth asks him who was he and attacks him. The man avoids the punch but the boss's son gets hit. The man stops Seth from attacking him and Rodney and June come there. They take out their weapon and were ready to fight. Seth was angry to see June as his bodyguard and yells at them for making it look like he had lost. He attacks again and this time was able to land a punch on that man. After that, we see that they have come back from the trip. Peter scolds Seth to have caused such trouble. He yells at June and Rodney as well and they apologize for not stopping him. Peter was worried because those people aren't just some thugs, they are the triad. Seth says that he was not going to run away after someone attacks him first. Because of this fight, Joe was in much trouble. The boss's son was admitted to a hospital. He was angry at Joe and others and promises not to forgive them. The next day at school, Victor, Brock and June didn't come. At Victor's gym, Victor and Brock were training. Victor keeps imagining how he lost and was very frustrated with himself. There was a new transfer student in Seth's class from Japan. It was Akira, the one that the three-headed gang's leader hired to kill Seth. The boys were mesmerized by his beauty. She introduces herself and looks at Seth. Sophie admires her beauty as well. She notices that Akira was looking directly at Seth. Sophie thinks that she is into Seth, Akira notices her and smiles at her. Sophie gets a little possessive and takes Seth to the cafeteria. Outside the school, June and Rodney, also called Bob, were smoking. Earlier, Seth was angry at Peter for putting a bodyguard in the same class as him and asks Peter to take him out. But after going to this school for a few days, now June really wants to go to school. When Sophie and Seth were alone outside, Akira comes there and Sophie to be her friend. She asks her if Seth is his boyfriend. She was hesitant but Seth says that he is. He leaves from there and notices something was weird about her. Sophie was happy that he confessed that he is her boyfriend. After school, Seth comes to his mom's cafe. He mentioned Akira saying there was something odd about her. He tells her that Akira has the same vibe as her. After hearing this, she was furious. At school, Akira goes to the rooftop, sees Seth and plans on getting rid of him. Seth notices someone watching from above but Akira hides from him. She reveals her weapons, which she has had all this time. But she was horrified when she hears someone behind her. It was Seth's mom. She seems to know about Akira's clan and as she says, the bloodline continues. She orders Akira in a cold voice if she goes back. She would act like nothing has happened. Akira doesn't understand and attacks her with her weapon, but she just catches it without even flinching. Seth's mom asks her what she wants. Akira was terrified. Seth's mom attacks her with her own weapon, but Akira dodges it. And while she was distracted by the weapon, she attacks her again but this time Akira wasn't able to respond. She spares her by kicking the surface instead of Akira and orders her to listen. In the class, June comes there again. Earlier, June requests Seth that he really wants to come to this school and wanted his permission. Seth agrees to let him come to the school but tells him not to be so formal because he wants a friend, not a bodyguard. On the other side, Seth's mom treats her wound and orders Akira to take her to her boss. In class, Seth was feeling down because none of his friends were coming to school anymore. After school, he goes to his mom's cafe but it was closed. He calls her but she didn't answer his phone. Seth gets worried. His mom and Akira arrive at the three-headed gang's base. She ordered Akira to stay outside and not to run away, and she goes in there alone. She meets two bodyguards at the gate. They stop her from entering. She hits them in the back of their neck so fast that they weren't even able to react. One of them sounds the alarm. When she gets inside, she meets the number two of the gang. He asks her who is she and when she doesn't reply. He orders all his men to come out and says what a single woman could do. She was surrounded by them and warns them saying, anyone who attacks her with a weapon would die. She reveals that she is Seth's mom, and the one they are trying to kill is her son. At Victor's gym, Victor and Brock were sparring non-stop, even though they were fully exhausted. Seth comes there and asks them, why they weren't attending classes. They were surprised to see him he. Seth saw them fighting and asks if he can join too. Brock gets out of the ring because he knows, 
He is still not ready to fight him but says that he will beat him soon. But Victor challenges him to fight. They start fighting, again, Seth dodges all his attacks, and when he finds an opening, he attacks Victor. Victor blocks the attack, but he still felt the punch. Victor wonders, why are these guys so strong and attack Seth in anger? And on the other side, Seth's mom was beating those guys brutally. She already had defeated many of them, and the rest of them were scared to even attack her. One guy attacks her, but she kicks him in the face. A second member attacks her and she makes him attack his own gang member. In anger he attacks her but she stabs her fingers into his eyes and slams him on the floor. The rest of the members start falling back. One guy comes with a gun from her behind and asks her not to move. Another guy attacks her with a bat, but she dodges him, kicks the knife on the floor, hits the guy with the gun, and he misses his aim and shoots the guy with the bat in the head. She finds a sword and starts slicing whoever comes her way. Now she had stopped holding back and says that she'll be slicing the necks of anyone that tries to stop her. At another place, Jason's father was having a conversation with Sophie's father. Jason's father was angry with the Sunshine Group for taking his school from him and wanted to take revenge. Sophie's father tells him there is nothing illegal about the Sunshine Company, so he can't do anything anyway. Jason's father tells him that he already had sent his brother to Japan's biggest gang for help. When Sophie's father asks him what he was going to do, he replies that he was going to get rid of some guys that's all. Sophie's dad becomes angry and says that he follows the law. He is gonna pretend he didn't hear it and leaves. On the other hand, Seth's mom had butchered all the gang members into pieces. She also killed the second in command. The boss was afraid and wonders, who is she? She warns him if he touches his son again, she would kill him. In school, Seth was still worried about his mom. After school, he comes to his mom's cafe and asks him where was she. She lies to him saying she had some errand to run. Then Seth was surprised to see Akira there, dressing as an employee. Seth was very confused. Now we see three-headed ghost gang's boss, Miduki Ryano Suk. Jason's uncle offers him money to get rid of the Sunshine Group, but Miduki said it wasn't enough. He asks him to allow them to do business in Korea. Then they would get rid of the Sunshine Group for them. Meanwhile, on Jeju Island, Joe was getting beaten up by some men. This man was Joan Lee, that guy whom Seth beat up when he was on the trip. He was his brother. And he was asking Joe to tell him the name of the guy who beat up his younger brother. At the sunshine, Peter gets a call from Joe. Joan takes the phone and asks Peter to give him the one who beat up his brother, or he will wipe out the sunshine group. Peter also gets angry and tells him that if he dares to lay hands on Joe, he would not leave Corey alive. Next day it's cool. Seth glares at Akira in anger when she comes into the class. He takes Akira to the rooftop to talk. Sophie sees them going together and follows them as well. Seth asks her what she wants and why is she working at his mom's cafe. When she doesn't answer, he gets angry. Akira says to him why he and his mother are bothering her and starts crying. Miduki comes to Korea, to his branch in Korea. When he gets inside, he sees there was no one in there. He calls Ryanshin, who was sitting alone in the corner. Miduki asks Sunshine for a favor to get rid of the Sunshine group. Hearing this name, Sunshine, he was terrified and asked him to leave. They don't want anything to do with those guys. He was shivering with fear. After school, Seth was challenged by some seniors from the student council. It was Jason who set this up. They didn't want to gang up on him. They fight him one on one. The first one to fight is Scott Choi head of the kendo club. He specializes in sword fighting and asks Seth if it's okay to fight with his weapon. Seth replies, sure, it's not my first time fighting like this. Scott gets angry and attacks Seth. He dodges all his attacks. Jason gets angry at them for not attacking him all at once. June and Bob also come there when he wasn't coming out. Seth beats Scott with just one punch and now the other two attack him as well. Seth also was looking for a fight and he gets excited as well and ends the fight in just a few moves. June notices that he is holding back against these students and start talking about his fights where he doesn't hold back. Jason gets terrified. After defeating those three, he asks the next student to fight him but he says he didn't have any intention of fighting him anyway. June calls Seth by his first name. Bob was stunned by him being so casual with Seth. He says Seth is my classmate. He tells him that it was Jason who ordered them to do it. He says to just leave him he is an idiot. Peter comes to Jeju Island to meet with the black group Mondo's branch chief Joan Lee. Peter sees Joe all beat up and he gets angry. Joe asks him to keep this a secret. Joan asks him not to make things complicated just over a high school kid. To which he replies that he is not just a high school kid, and he is letting them go alive because they didn't kill Joe. Peter asks him if he had permission from his boss, 
and does he know what kind of company Sunshine is? Joan replies it's a personal matter. Peter says if it's war they want, he would gladly accept it. Joan burst out and says he only wants the kid who beat up his younger brother, to which Peter replies, the kid you are talking about, made my face like this. He tells him if he wants to meet him so badly, try to beat him first. If he wins, he will let him meet him, and if he loses, he would have to go back and never come back. Joan also makes conditions, first, Peter would have to defeat his men, then he'll fight him. Those two attack him but he doesn't dodge the attack, and takes the blow head on, and doesn't even flinches. Then he strikes back, punching one of them and strangling the second one, and wins the fight against them. Joan starts clapping and acknowledges that he is strong, and they both face each other, ready to fight. Joan uses one of his moves, but Peter couldn't avoid it and takes the hit head on. But even after a direct hit like that, he was completely fine. Joan was shocked to see him unscathed. Peter also gets ready to fight back, but their fight was interrupted by one of Joan's gang members. He greets Peter on his boss's behalf and apologizes to him to have caused this much trouble. He whispers something in Joan's ears and he calms down. But he says that he'll be back, to which Peter replies, the next time he sees him, he would kill him. Next morning, Sophie asks Seth to go to watch a movie together. Seth's mom and Akira were going somewhere. In mountains, there was a house in this isolated place. This is where she was trained. His master asks him why she was he. We see a boy whom she calls little bro. They were here regarding Akira. She wanted Akira to leave in his car. His master asks him to take his student with her, as he can't keep him on this mountain forever. She was the heir of this dojo, but she gave up on being the heir for Seth's father and now that boy was the heir. Seth and Sophie were going to watch the movie, but Sophie's father comes there. He said he wanted to meet Sophie's first boyfriend as an excuse. While Sophie was away, Seth asks him if he had something to say to him. Sophie's father tells him that he knows that Seth is the heir of the Sunshine Group, and because his daughter is with him, she might be in danger. He shows him an image of Miduki and tells him that he is only helping him because of Sophie, and this is the last time he is going to help him. And if something happens to Sophie, the Sunshine Group will disappear without a trace. When their date was over, he calls his uncle, but he doesn't pick up. He asks Rod to find out about those people. When Rod sees the image, he was shocked. He tells Seth that they are from one of the biggest gangs in Japan, called the Three-Headed Ghost Gang, and he is the single-headed gang's boss, the worst out of the three. Now we see the Mondo gang's boss, Moonly. He was scolding his son for going after the Sunshine Group. Joan asks him, is the Sunshine Group that big of a deal? To which he replies, Sunshine is not the problem. It's because she's there. They were talking about Seth's mother. They were terrified of her. But Jun still doesn't listen to him and was fixated on getting revenge. The next day, June and Rod were keeping a close eye on Seth because of the threat of the three-headed gang. Victor and Brock ask the chairman for a fever. During lunch, the chairman calls Seth to the gym. Brock wants a rematch with Seth now that he thinks that he is ready. Seth agrees to fight. They give him gloves but he declines to wear them. The match begins, Brock attacks first but Seth dodges it and attacks Brock. But this time Brock avoids the attack as well. Seth was surprised to see him improve in such a short amount of time. A man tells Miduki that they were able to find Seth's location and they prepare to leave right away. And he, they were still fighting and Seth manages to land his first punch on Brock. But Brock induces it and attacks him back. The gym teacher was wondering what kind of monster is Seth who was even able to overpower Brock, even after how much Brock had improved these last months. Now Brock was on the defensive and was just blocking his attacks. The lunchtime runs out and the gym teacher stops the fight, but it was clear if the fight continued who would have won. Seth tells him to finish the fight after class. Victor was also a little nervous after seeing them fighting. Miduki calls Jason's dad to tell him that they are ready. Jason's father assures them saying he would take care of the aftermath. They arrive at the school. Joan was also coming for Seth with his younger brother. At the school, Sophie was still worried about Seth seeing him all gloomy. Bob sees two trucks and a car stopping in front of the school gate. A man closes all gates, and many men come out of those buses. Then he sees Miduki coming out of the car. Rod was furious, he asked the guy to open the gate. While that guy was processing what he was saying, Rod grabs him by the shirt and slams him into the gate. He even brings his rod, which shows he is serious now. He massages June that says, they are he. He gets up suddenly and all his classmates were shocked. At the gym, Victor was telling Brock that he was losing and that he should give up now. Brock says that he tried everything but not wrestling, which is his specialty, 
and next time he is going to fight him on the floor. They were just talking and some men come there looking for Seth. They show them Seth's picture and ask them if he is he. After knowing that he was not there, they start to get out of the gym. Brock calls them asking why were they looking for him, and Brock and Victor approach them to fight. Miduki's men were everywhere looking for Seth. When they start going upstairs, they were welcomed by June. He jumps on them, and without them even realizing it, stabs one of the men. When the man was about to react, he stabs him many more times and the man collapses. The class was still going on, without realizing what was going on outside. Seth hears some noise outside and was thinking something is up. Mijuoki and his men barge into the chairman's office and when he asks them who are they, one of his men gets behind the chairman in an instant and makes him sit by force. Miduki asks the chairman to give him Seth Kang or he would die. The chairman threatens to call the cops but Miduki wasn't afraid and tells him to go ahead and call them. Meanwhile, at the gym, Brock asks them again why they were looking for Seth. The guy feels insulted and attacks Brock. Brock pinches him hard and he was out cold, but even then Brock pinches him again. He was angry because of his fight with Seth. They all attack him at once and Victor had to step in as well. On the other side, after June finishes one of the men, the others were in a rage and attack him, but June was brutally finishing them one by one. On Rodney's side, he was facing a whole gang on his own and they still won't stop coming. At first, Bob was worrying about the others, but then he snaps and attacks them head on. Now everyone in the class hears the noise coming from the outside, including Seth. Seth gets up to go outside. The class teacher asks him where he was going, and he orders them not to let anyone get out of the class. When he comes downstairs, he sees the bodies that were finished by June. June was surrounded by them and was in a trouble. Seth sees a fire extinguisher, comes from behind them, and slams one of them with that. They recognize him and attack him instead. Seth uses the extinguisher to block their eyesight and jumps into the smoke to fight them like a demon. He comes out on the other side of the smoke, beating all of them in an instant. The chairman calls the police and reports them, but they hung up on him when they hear it was Young Jin Hai. One of Miduki's men comes there and tells him that they found Seth. Seth and Jun team up to fight them. Seth asks if he had informed his uncle yet, to which he replies that he called but he didn't pick up so he left a massage. Seth looks at June in anger and says let's bring this outside. Outside, Rodney was fighting them, playing with them. Seth and June also come outside fighting. Brock and Victor had also finished the guys in the gym and come out there. Seth asks Victor and Brock to stay out of this, but Brock says it's too late for that. Miduki also comes there and sees all his men down. Seth asks him what he wants to which Miduki replies, your head. Rod and June come in front of Seth to protect him. Miduki smiles and brings his strongest member Kyle to the front. Kyle is not your regular gangster. He is the strongest fighter in all of Japan. Rodney and June get in a position to fight. Kyle attacks them, and they didn't even see him coming. He pinches them at the same time in an instant getting them out of the way. Seth was also shocked to see him fight. Two cops come there after the report but they don't see anything unusual. Then one of them sees a boy and they were going to call for backup. When Sunshine Group, eyeing Branch Chief David Lee comes there with his men. The police were scared to see them. Then Jonas Yoon from Sundam Branch of the Sunshine Group also comes there. It was the first time in a long time that they have been called. And just like that the rest of the executives and branch chiefs also come there. They call him to ask for permission to go in, but he orders them to wait. He was almost there himself. After punching the two, Kyle comes face to face with Seth to fight him. But June and Rodney were not defeated yet. Seth orders them not to interfere. He was going to take care of him alone. Kyle attacks him so fast that Seth barely avoids it. He was so fast that it was getting harder for Seth to keep up. Kyle keeps attacking him, and Seth keeps avoiding all his attacks. Everyone was shocked to see Kyle moving so fast and Seth avoiding all those attacks. After avoiding Kyle's attacks for some time, Seth was able to figure out his pattern of attack and was able to block one of his attacks. And now Seth was attacking him for the first time. But Kyle miraculously dodges that attack. Seth says this is fun, and Kyle also gets excited to fight him, and they start their unbelievable fight again. At first, they were just dodging each other's attack, but as the fight goes on, their fight starts getting intense as well. Kyle avoids Seth's punch and attacks him with his leg which Seth blocks with his hand. And this was Kyle's second hit on Seth. They see a chopper that lands on the school ground and Peter comes out of it, and so does his whole gang. Victor was stunned to see so many gang members. Everyone bows before Seth, 
giving him their respect to him. From a distance, Joan was watching all this. He decided not to interfere since the cops were there as well. So he decides just watch them for fun. But Seth's mom comes there. They were not even able to see her and were shocked. Seth orders them not to interfere and insists on winning fair and square even when his uncle tells him not to fight. Jason's father and uncle were watching all this. Miduki also orders Kyle to get rid of him, and they run toward each other to fight. But Seth's mom comes there and asks them to stop. Everyone was shocked and confused to see her there. She tells Peter to take care of the injured and take the rest outside school. Wen was hesitant and asked her why, to which she replies in a cold voice, since when did you question my orders? She says to Kyle that since her son would deal with him, she is letting him live for now. Kyle was shocked to hear that. She goes to Miduki and says him to take all his people and go back from Korea. Hearing this, one of his men screams at her, and she pinches him hard while injuring Miduki as well, and says the next time he interrupts her, she would kill him. She makes a deal with Miduki, saying her son would fight you guy Kyle, and if Seth beats him, he would have to go back. Seth was confused as well. She coldly tells Seth if he can't win this fight, he would have to get down from his position as the boss. Seth says there is no way in hell that he is going to lose. Sophie comes down and sees all the bodies. The cops weren't coming, so she calls her father and tells him everything. He was extremely furious after hearing this. Miduki orders Kyle to kill Seth, and now Kyle was using a dagger. Rodney tries to give Seth his weapon, but he says he doesn't need that, and they jump straight into the fight. 